I think most pilots admire the skills of a good stick. An aerobatic pilot rolling on top of a loop. The pilot who lands a float plane on a tiny mountain lake. The tailwheel pilot making a perfect touchdown in a strong crosswind. Have you wondered what you can do to develop similar skills and become a confident, skillful flyer? Actually, there are only two fundamentals to master. Don't confuse being a pilot with being a flyer, a great stick. To be a great stick, to direct an airplane within the entire flight envelope, you need to master only two fundamental skills. Don't stall, control yaw. Good sticks understand that airplanes do not stall. Pilots cause airplanes to stall by applying excessive back pressure on the stick. And to recover a stall, that's easy. Just stop pulling back. Learn when to unload the elevator to avoid a stall and thereby avoid a spin. Just fly the thing. My Key Points video, Stall, Upset, and Spin Recovery, will help you master that definitive skill. The second skill set of a great flyer is Rudder Fundamentals. Are you apprehensive about flying an airplane outside the limits of your experience? Do you avoid practicing slow flight and stalls because you are anxious about spins? Let's meet the beast head on. This film clip shows a fully developed spin as seen from the cockpit. A pilot needs to understand that a heavy hand or misuse of the controls during an unusual attitude can stall the wing and begin a spin event. Avoid a stall and you avoid a spin. So what is an unusual attitude? The answer is subjective. My definition of an unusual attitude is when that inner voice says, oh shucks, <laughs> you're in an unusual attitude. Recovery from such an attitude applies two simple principles. First, unload the airplane. It will not stall at zero G. Second, from a nose high attitude, an airplane at zero G will follow a ballistic flight path to a nose low attitude. Yaw associated with the use of ailerons is called adverse yaw. To illustrate, look at this sight picture from straight and level flight. The nose is well below the horizon prior to rolling into a turn. Without using rudder, the airplane rolls into a left bank. Adverse yaw to the right moves the nose upward above the horizon. This photo shows the subsequent sight picture. The airplane has rotated on its vertical axis to the right. Lead the return to neutral ailerons by saying off it and smartly releasing the rudder pressure.
On it, off it. On it, off it. On it, off it. P factor is the dissimilar thrust between ascending and descending blades of a propeller. P factor causes airplanes to yaw left during a climb and yaw right during a descent. The turn is not efficient. The airplane is struggling against the turn. Watch the sight picture closely as I apply rudder to neutralize P factor. Note the immediate response to proper use of the rudder. You have seen adverse yaw and P factor yaw from the cockpit. In this next maneuver, I will recover from a dive to illustrate another yawing force, gyroscopic yaw. Watch the sight picture as I pull back on the stick to recover from a dive. The nose will yaw to the right in a dramatic change of heading. There it goes off to the right. Freed from the worry of stalls and spins, a good stick can master the use of cross control to slip an airplane in a plethora of aerial maneuvers. Have you ever turned late to final and discovered your flight path was not aligned with the runway? In this case, my wide turn has placed the runway well to my left. Instead of an awkward S-turn, I will execute a side slip to realign. I keep the airplane's longitudinal axis parallel to the runway center line. I slip the airplane sideways until aligned with the runway. I maintain a constant rate of descent. The airplane is stable. 